This is Ministry. I am Laurie Fetikus. I've been playing campaign maps quickly. Today I'm doing Karst. Uh, Karst is the second to last map in the campaign, and it's a survival map. And unfortunately, it follows the pattern of most of the campaign maps that you start out with enough advanced resources in the initial loadout that you don't have to bother building those chains. Uh, so I'm not gonna, well, I'm not using Surge for anything. Uh, I've got enough carbide to build pyrolysis and cryogen, cryofluid generator, that stuff. So we're gonna take advantage of the sublimates with uh, cyanogen. That's the word, cyanogen. Gassy green. Gassy green, gassy fire green, that stuff. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna put gassy green in sublimates around all of the enemy spawn points, and then we're just gonna click the wave arrow and finish it up. Nitrogen into the tungsten drills you start with, that finishes them off. Uh, I've got wet green on the right here, and there is wet red on the left. Uh, I need to put those in the same place to get a reasonable amount of power. So this is going to make the hydrogen for that. Uh, we're also going to have to actually start fighting sooner than the, uh, than the final defense will be ready. So I'm going to bridge that gap with uh, ozone and the sublimates. So this thing is also going to be used to load some ozone tanks, and I'm going to put those by the spawns to start out with. We're also starting out with enough thorium that uh, I'll be able to put down some build towers, and that'll speed up all the uh, defensive point construction. Won't have to build any thorium production. Uh, I am do well. I'm doing the map in the campaign, but I've previously finished the map, researched everything, and then abandoned it. So there is none of the research aspect of stuff going on. But even without that, I'm not actually using any of the tech that becomes available landing here. Like I'm, I'm not going to use phase, so that part wouldn't really matter. Uh, once again, we are stuck with uh, dumb and bad initial drill layouts that I have to work around to get hydrogen into the bores. You know, so uh, the initial silicon arcs aren't getting enough sand, you have to pour sand on that. Uh, that factory is for scouting purposes. Uh, I am going to need to fly drive, uh, hover eludes, uh, I need to find the point where air attacks, I need to find the uh, southern approach, and there is also an eastern wave spawn, but it's divided, it's in the middle of a path, and units will either go left or right, so I have to put defenses on either side to make sure that they get uh, finished off quickly. My brillium is stretched thin, but that'll be basically fine. My power will stay stretched thin until the paralysis actually gets taken care of. Uh, I need the first elude to find a vent on the left side so that I can put hydrogen factory over there. I'll start filling up the first ozone tank. Yeah, so I am just about coming up on the end of campaign maps. Uh, one of the ideas that I've gotten is this has really been teaching me a lot about what makes uh, maps good or bad or fun or difficult. And I think I might try my hand at making some maps myself uh, trying to do things better. 
So we'll see how that goes. Although it's, uh, I would almost certainly be trying to make things harder. Uh, like, I wouldn't do this initial loadout, gives you everything you need. Uh, so like forcing the player to actually progress through the tech tree while there is sometimes combat being necessary. Uh, that'd be more interesting. I've also got some ideas for using uh, world processor logic to make the spawns uh, less predictable and more challenging. Like just the basic wave spawner, everything all the time has been go build a forward defense right by where it spawns and that'll do fine. Uh, so I want to try and lay things out so that there's some randomness and there's sort of a, uh, a wider attack surface so that you can't just build one thing to seal off a wave spawn completely. I so also uh, break the wave pattern. So have things spawn randomly even outside of waves because world processors can just spawn units. So, you know, there's some tanks just wandering around all the time and you always have to be on the lookout for them. You don't always get a, a warning with a timer. All right, this elude has found uh, one of the defensive spots that we need to get to. So only flying units and quabs will go through there. And tanks that spawn at this spot uh, will go around right. And this guy is headed for uh, the air spawn first. And I'm also um, preparing to build the cyanogen here. So this is just a take wet red and turn it into heat. The two oxide factories were plenty and route down some of the green to plug into that. I need graphite which is going to come from the left that's why I pre-placed that hydrogen pipe and I'm also going to want a tiny little bit of beryllium to set up a container factory we're not actually going to run pipes or do Rube Goldberg to get the cyanogen to the forward defensive points. We're just going to carry the containers. It's faster that way. Get ready to start filling that up. You have to actually plug in the slag. Come on. Router, 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 go. And we're going. And we got three minutes. Uh, so give me a second ozone tank. I need at least two or three of them. And let's go set up the first. Yeah, all right. So found the spawn on the right. This is the spot where the air defense goes, so there will be uh, all sorts of things all up and down the ship tree that are going to come in to that point. Three sublimates with cyanogen will kill them all, but uh, that's not going to be for a few waves. Apparently the old version of this map had like 50 waves. Maybe that was harder. It's not hard anymore. All right, build tower first. Rig that up with a little bit of power. I want to seal off a wall and get some sublimates down. A couple of those. There's the second vent to run the build tower. It'd also be nice and convenient for replacing wall segments. That was the wrong way to do that. I just wasted a bunch of ozone, but it'll be fine. I can bring more later. Uh, I'm using 
one by one walls, not two by two. And the reason for, well, it goes down faster for the initial wall, which is fine for this point. But I'm gonna keep building the one by ones because a lot of the stuff that comes through has got like pierce or frag or whatever else where a two by two wall would count as one bullet collision and then the pierce would go through and hit the stuff that I actually want to be protected. But if I've got four one by ones there, then it's gonna deplete the pierce and the frag bullets faster. Uh, the wall will absorb more damage and it'll pieces will get destroyed faster, but it will do a better job protecting the stuff behind it. Uh, especially the, the most vulnerable stuff back there is the pipes. Uh, if pipes get destroyed in the wrong way, then all the stuff leaks out of the containers. And of course to point out, there are definitely places where stuff could be going faster here. Uh, this is this is like the second time I ran through this, second or third. Uh, first time I ran through, I actually built up all the tech and took a long time and didn't need any of it. And then a couple runs trying the just the sublimate uh, with cyanogen. Got my elude stuck. Yeah, another thing that makes this really easy, there is a ton of time between waves. I have as much time as I need to do absolutely anything. All right. Prepare to build that wall. The elites don't really matter anymore. They can. And then emergency, they might, you know, be able to show up somewhere in time to do something. Uh, in case somebody turns right here, and they could help. We don't quite have enough power to actually run the build tower at full efficiency, but that's fine. Maybe if I bothered to build a third turbine, then something would get a tiny little bit faster. That's sealed off. And now I'm going to take the time to set up a container factory. And we'll start doing the, the cyanogen loads. That could be faster. Yeah, eventually somebody should come along and actually, you know, bother to use shortcut keys to do all of this much faster. Someone should do that. They haven't yet. Eventually it should happen. I don't want to learn shortcut keys. I got my muscle memory is already like going down to the right anyway. I'm old, set in my ways. Yeah, first one fills right up. Nice. Second one. It is a, a real nice benefit about using the unloader to fill up tanks for things. Uh, is It doesn't do like the liquid equalization across an entire network thing. Like you put a bunch of containers in a row and they'll all fill up a little bit. It won't fill the last one first and go on. You use the unloader, then it's sucking stuff out and putting it in the container and get all of it out for the cost of some extra overhead. Uh, I do end up needing more oxide to keep building the sublimates. They are fairly oxide hungry. Yeah, and this is setting up the, the air defense. Another thing to point out uh, ways that the campaign is not challenging is how 
The air units always seem to come in the same spot very predictably. There is no randomness to it at all. So I know exactly where to put these and leave enough space for the walls to go in. And you know, there's gonna be quells, there's gonna be disperse. This will take care of it fine. Well, at one, I'm gonna have to bring a second tank and I'm gonna have to build a second sublimate. But that'll be enough to clear every air wave that comes to this point. Now a human controlling those waves would go around this or would not bring the quells within range to themselves get hit by the sublimate. The NPC controlling the malice does not do a smart thing like that though. Another thing that could probably be better and I haven't I haven't completely like there's an amount of research that it would take to figure out is you know at what level do you need a defense at each point that is like the minimum viable to hit the arrow and move forward. Like I may have already had enough and I could have been done with the second wave already. But I don't have it memorized and I'm not completely sure. Uh, so I'm sort of overbuilding and not taking advantage of it, which may cost time overall. Hmm. I do know that for the final wave, like the hardest wave of it each point, I know how many sublimates and how much cyanogen I need at each point. You know, I need uh, six to eight in the southern defensive point. I need about four of them here, and I need about four to six on the other side of this one. That actually has tanks come through, which are uh, a little bit dangerous. The toughest thing that tries to come here is some Anthicus. And other missiles get shot down by the sublimates very easily. All the tanks go to the right. Like, I don't know if the next spawn has tanks of any significance going to the right, so I am waiting to get the, the first cyanogen load onto the right before moving through the next. Oh. That's what comes through. It is some eludes. And it was fine. And we are also just sort of skirting the edge of the rate that oxide is coming in. Really also Running beryllium pretty scarce as well. But yeah, it's you're you're running the economy right if you just barely almost run out of something, but you don't actually. There's no need to overbuild stuff that isn't actually necessary. And the third one of those. Plenty of cyanogen in reserve. A little bit more wall. Start to plan the next one down here. It is an intentional choice to rig up separate pipes to each one of the sublimates. As if I happen to lose any of them, I don't want all of the cyanogen or ozone to drain out. Uh, so, you know, worst case, I might lose two of them due to leaks. Like the, the final wave has a guardian, uh, Kolaris, uh, which does have the, the damage and pierce to, to break through the amount of walls that I'm going to have there. There's the arrow, guardian warning, and not even stopping to watch the fights, really. You can see on the map if stuff is in one spot or the other. 
There's also like sort of some weird slowness. It takes a while for like averts over here to actually start attacking. I don't know what they're doing in the meantime. Oh, here they come. There they go. So that defensive point is basically done. And I've also, you know, just barely having enough uh, filled up tanks. You know, I'm not massively overproducing cyanogen either. Yeah, that one's probably a little risky as far as draining everything out, possibly, but uh, nothing strong enough is going to come to this point to actually risk breaking through. And the beryllium's skirting real close. So there is thorium on this map. Uh, I'd have to go find it and reveal it and build stuff over there to get it out. And there is also another core location that I'm not at all going to bother with. Uh, one of the possibilities that I really don't want is that if I, uh, if I did build the other core, that might change the spawn behavior of any of the waves. Uh, the most risk is from the air units. If the air units decide to go in a different direction, then that would undermine my pre-positioning of defenses. So I'll just leave those cores uncapped and make do with the single one. Plenty of resource storage. I don't need any unit cap at all at this point. Six of those is probably enough. I do need more cyanogen at this point before getting to the end. slight map view of whatever's coming through getting crushed. It is doing a fairly good job of representing all the different stuff in the unit trees in the, the attacks coming through. And a lot of the stuff, the, the attacking forces are concentrated more at the same time because I've put my defenses so close to the spawns. Whereas if I had further back defenses, then say, eludes would separate from tanks. Uh, all the different speeds of things would, would split them up and make less concentrated force attack at a time. That's another thing that could be different about a campaign map to make it more interesting or challenging, is trying to space out the, the spawn locations of different things so they arrive at the defensive point or the core wherever at the same time like spawn the eludes way back spawn the air units way back but spawn the the vanquishes very close and then they all travel at their speed and arrive at the same time that would be better i think it's uh it's an inverted result of the game design where when a wave spawns everything spawns versus Tower defense games generally hand that as uh, a wave is a range of time. You know, there's like you know, one or two minutes where stuff is spawning during that entire one or two minutes. And so uh, different varieties of units mixed together at different speeds. But here, if everything plops down at the same time, then all of the same units with different speeds will sort of separate out like, you know, um, oil floating the top of water or whatever. Hmm. And those build towers, fixing any progress. I think those last 17 are air units and everything is just about done. That'll almost fill up. Yeah, yeah, that's like a quell, a disrupt, is what it was. Just barely got a glimpse of it on the map. Grab this one. And I am taking it to where the Guardian will spawn. And 
top these off. And let's go. Let's finish it up. There's those Kalara shots. They cut through pretty harshly. Tech is burned down easily. Uh, missiles from Athicus burned down. There goes the Guardian. We did actually cut through and got a couple sublimates, but there's plenty of backup. And over here, quells? Those are quells. Those will burn down. We just got too close. And we're done. Uh, 2518. Probably plenty of room for improvement. Get that down to like 21 or 20 or something if I kept working at it. All right then. Uh, next map is the last one, which is Origin. And from what I've seen of it so far, it is just a grind fest. So I'm not looking forward to that.